This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, high-performance cloud hosting for everyone. Visit linode.com slash macvoices and take $20 off your first server package. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time I have somebody new for you, and I'm really excited about what we're talking about today. Um, I have Adam Sokol from Overdrive. Uh, they make the application Libby, and they have a bit of an announcement to make here uh, about some new capabilities of it. Adam, welcome. It's great to see you and to meet you for the first time. Yeah, Chuck, thank you uh, for, for bringing me on. I'm excited to talk about you know ebooks and audiobooks and libraries. And uh, yeah, so a lot of exciting stuff here. So I can I can just get right right into it if you'd like me to. Yeah, I mean I, I have to say I've I, I am genuinely excited about this because this brings together a lot of things that that I really love. Audiobooks, um, because I think audio enter entertainment is so so important and so mm -hmm. uh, sorry, productive at this at this particular time, even more so than other times. Um, and also the the public library system is something that I think is one of the great jewels of, of our country. And so you guys do something really amazing with that with Libby, and you're taking that even a little farther. We are, yeah. So Libby, as you mentioned, it's an ebook and audiobook app that lets people borrow books completely for free from their library anytime, anywhere. It's right on your phone. So whether you have an Apple, which obviously is, would be the crux of the things we'd be talking about right now, or an Android, uh, any device really is compatible with Libby. You just download it, and then all you need is a library card, and actually a massive number of our major library systems will provide you a library card using your cell phone number if you obviously can't get out of your house, which you can get into a little bit later, but put in your library card and you have access to you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of eBooks and audiobooks from your library completely free. And um, as you mentioned, one of the things that we're really excited about is you can, of course, listen to these on your, your phones. Uh, you can use headphones and things like that. But since people are in their houses now, one of the exciting new things we're, we're doing is uh, we have a partnership with Sonos where you can use your Sonos home audio system to listen to your audiobooks. Uh, so, you know, you, some people have a Sonos sound system just in one room or two rooms. I actually, uh, I was I was really excited about this personally. Uh, when my wife and I built our house about two years ago, one of the uh, fix-ins that I got to put in was we have a full Sonos sound system in our house. And so when this went live, uh, I showed it to her and all of a sudden, because we both have very similar uh, book preferences while we're working from home together we've just been listening to audiobooks all throughout our house and it couldn't be simpler uh you you know open up your sonos app and then in the settings there's an area where you can add services and you just type the word libyan and then it's right on your sonos app you push play and it's playing any audiobook that you have already borrowed from your library so anything you've borrowed you can listen to all throughout your home uh, on any of the Sonos speakers, and, and it syncs up with your Libby app. So if you're listening, you know, for a while in your home while you're while you're working or making dinner, and then you want to take a dog for a walk, something like that, and you put your headphones in, it's going to sync up right with your phone. So it's just a, another really exciting way to access content that you have from the library. And like we said, we know that a lot of people are at home right now. Um, a while back, we were really excited about Apple CarPlay, which is another way that you can listen to your audiobooks with Libby. Um, not too many people are in their cars at the at the moment right now, so the Sonos stuff is was really exciting to be able to offer to people. Yeah, when I heard this, I was I was really excited because I too am a I'm an enthusiastic Sonos owner. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how many Sonos speakers I have because it's embarrassing. <laughs> but I let's just say that there probably isn't a room in the house that doesn't have a Sonos speaker uh, somewhere. So. Mm -hmm. That, that's great, and and so I want to make sure we go over that in a little, just a little more detail. Um, so so f working backwards, um, mm -hmm. I've I I have to select the Libby source in my Sonos application. Yeah. So the first time the first time you want to do this, what you'll do is you'll go to the settings button. So if you open up your your Sonos app, it's going to be the one on the far right, and then where it's going to say service and voices, and you just tap add a service. And when you hit Libby, it's going to pull up and it'll actually say Libby by Overdrive, which is the name of our, our company and the app together. And then once you tap that, it's going to automatically be integrated into where you have your My Sonos area, which is the far left button. And then it's available for you there, and, you know, right next to your Spotify playlists or your Pandora playlist, anything like that. Um, and then it'll just show up where your, your browse button is in your, your Sonos app. So, you know, I personally have 
Spotify and Amazon Music and Pandora, which is a little overwhelming for the amount of music I've got on there. Um, and then right in the middle of those is Libby by Overdrive. So when I tap that, it's showing me all the, the audiobooks that I currently have borrowed. So like right now I have uh, Dune and a couple of Harry Potter books and um, a book called The Deep by Alma Katsu. I'm not going to push play right now because my wife is on a conference call and I don't think she'd be too happy if it starts playing through the whole house. But um, yeah, once you just tap that ad button, it's it's right there for you. It's, it couldn't be simpler. So it's just like any other audio source. I mean, in, it, in my Sonos, I have Apple Music and um, and Pandora as well. So mm -hmm. if I when I want to listen to Pandora, I switch to that source. And now when I want to listen to an audio book through Libby, I'll just switch to that source. And then I'm able to direct it to the usual uh, zones that I have set up for my Sonos? Exactly, yeah. So our house, personally, we have a family room zone and a den zone and then a kitchen zone. Where I'm like you, I shouldn't admit how many Sonos uh, speakers I have throughout this house. But um, And then we actually have a, a rooftop deck zone. And so I can put them to all of them or just the area that I happen to be in at the moment. Um, yeah, it works just like any other application that you have in there. And then a few just kind of little simple things you can do. You can uh, go back 30 seconds or you can go forward 30 seconds. You know, one of the things about audiobooks that uh, people like to be able to just kind of toggle back just a little bit to see anything that they, you know, if you zone out for a sentence or two, which I am I am prone to do every now and then. So, yeah, it, it's just as simple as that. Um, and then anything, like I said, it's anything that you have borrowed as an audiobook, it, it's going to show up right there for you and, and you'll be good to go. So like I said, I want to work backwards. So, so that's yeah. the, that's the Sonos part. So mm -hmm. the, the Libby application for your public library. Yes. Um, so you're, you're right. I mean, usually if you just walk into any public library and can identify mm -hmm. yourself, you can get a card pretty much. Yeah. But in these days, not only can't we get out of the house or at least we're not supposed to get out of the house, but the libraries aren't even open. So right. that's something I wanted to, to ask you to address, you know, how you're working with libraries to make both Libby and this new Sonos capability available. Yeah. So one of the major benefits of our service has always been the fact that you can access it 24 seven, anytime, anywhere. And so we like to tell people if you were to come into our office, we have this huge global map and it shows you where circulations or like, checkouts are coming from. And sometimes it'll say something like Cleveland Public Library, but the, the dot will be in China. And that's because that person is in China, but they're using their Cleveland Public Library card. And this is all to say that no matter where you are, in the world, if you have a library card, you can download Libby and you have access to our service. So we work with about 44,000 libraries and schools, and it equates to about 90 to 95% of the US population. So uh, if you are in the United States watching this or listening right now, uh, just download the Libby app and then search. You can even just search for your zip code if you're not familiar with you know, what your library uh, system might be. So I live in um, a suburb of Cleveland and it's technically the county. So it's Cuyahoga County is the library, but just put in your zip code. It's gonna pull up the one closest to you. And, and I mentioned the library card, like you said, under a normal circumstance, you could walk right into your, your library and get a library card. And they would just ask you for, you know, whether it was a cell phone bill or just basically proof of where you live. Uh, what we're doing now is we have over a hundred major library systems that are using our instant digital card service. And so what that means is when you go into Libby, if your particular library system is one of the systems who makes this available, it'll ask you if you have a library card. And if you say no, it's going to say, would you like one through your cell phone? And then all it does is a third party service uh, takes just confirms that your cell phone is within their service population. And then they'll give you a library card using that, that cell phone number. Uh, and then you have access to, again, depending on how many titles your library has. And uh, it's imagine walking into New York Public Library versus Los Angeles Public Library. They're going to have slightly different collections. And that's the same thing with the digital service. Libraries pick and choose what content they want to make available. So um, with all of the physical libraries being closed right now, a lot of them are really focusing on their digital content because they are aware that their users, whether they are parents or they're you know, single or they're you know, 75 years old or they're 13 years old, they know that they're using this service digitally right now. So you're going to find content that's available. And again, even if you don't have a library card right now, a major number of, of libraries around the United States are making one available for you instantly. That's something, and, and you, 
you may not be the guy to ask, but I'll ask anyway. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I know, at least in the past, when I was, frankly, a bit more of a frequent library patron than I am now, mm -hmm. um, if, if my library didn't have a title and yeah. the library, you know, three counties over or maybe even three states over had it, mm -hmm. you know, they could arrange for me to borrow it. Yeah. Is that the, are we seeing the same kind of thing now with the digital assets for libraries or because I know there are a lot of there are a lot of copyright issues in mm -hmm. there as well. So uh, yeah. how is that working? So there there are um, copyright you know digital art management issues where you have to be very very careful about how you provide content to people. But what a lot of libraries are doing is a couple different things. One is there are what are known as consortia, which are a number of libraries that band together and basically create one massive collection. So we actually have a lot of uh, states who, like Maryland is, is one example where it's the Maryland Digital Library, and it's basically every library in Maryland belongs to it. Uh, Wisconsin's another one. And so what that means is that you might be a part of a very small member library system, and that particular library system might have a small collection, but you have access to the entire collection that the state has. So a lot of these consortia are making the titles available that you might not normally see if you were to walk into, say, my hometown library in Lorain, Ohio, which is very small. Lorain, Ohio belongs to the Ohio Digital Library, which means I have access to content across the entire state. Uh, something else that libraries do with our service is we have a tool called Recommend to Library. So you can go into their, um, their OverDrive collection and you can search for a book. Say you're looking for the newest um, Malcolm Gladwell, which is a bad example because I'm pretty sure just about everybody in the world has at least five or six copies of that, if not more. But if you were to look for that, and say, you know, I'm looking for the newest Malcolm Gladwell book as an audiobook. If it doesn't show up as a title that's available from the library, a lot of libraries use our service where it says recommend. And basically what you do is you tap that button, and then the library gets a notification that says, Adam Sokol is recommending that you buy that. And if they do, I'm the first one that gets access to borrow it because I asked them to purchase it. So I always tell people, if you're not seeing content that you want available, either use this recommend to library service or even just send an email to libraries. One of the amazing things about libraries and their staff is they actually listen to the people that they serve. So they're always willing to listen to the community about what content they want available. And we're trying to make as many ways as possible for them to do that. And, and libraries are fighting, I'm not sure, it's, I better not characterize it necessarily as an uphill battle, but they mm -hmm. are fighting a little bit of a battle, I think, as more and more things go digital and they're accessible in, in more and more ways that you mm -hmm. never have to physically go to. Now, of course, those ways cost money as opposed to a mm -hmm. library where it's free. But still, you know, people pay for convenience, and sometimes it's more convenient to just hit that download button and pay a couple <laughs> bucks than to drive across town to the library. I Absolutely. And the thing is, we like to tell people we are a library company. We're not just a digital company. We couldn't more fully support the uh, people going into libraries. In fact, what we found, we have uh, we've done a, a number of uh, research polls, and we've done a lot, of, a little bit of data where we've we've connected with people across the country. And what we found is that the more often people use a service like Libby or really any digital reading platform, the more likely they are to go into the library. And the reason is they they use a service like ours. Maybe they haven't borrowed a book in five or ten years, and they see one of our Facebook ads or something like that, and then they realize, oh, the library is providing eBooks and audiobooks. I wonder what else they're doing. And and the the truth is, um, you know, you're never going to get a better more rounded book recommendation than you will from a librarian because it's their job to know these curated collections. But not only that, you know, libraries provide these different assets that it's just unbelievable. They provide assistance if you're looking for, you know, jobs, if you need a, your resume up to date, if you need to 3D print something. A lot of libraries provide access to things like seed libraries, where if you're trying to grow, you know, vegetables and plants, it's the perfect time of year to start your own garden. They have seeds that you can borrow. Um, we actually, one of our libraries here in, in Northeast Ohio lets you borrow for a short amount of time, uh, basically like high-end art. So if you're putting on a gala or something like that, uh, there's libraries that let you borrow gardening tools or bicycles. Uh, they, they're they providing services that, you know, not only are they giving you access to borrow things, but they're using uh, their time to read to children or do after school activities. There is just a wealth of things that libraries do where they're not just a place where there's books, they're really community centers. And so our service is just an extension of really the endless amount of things you can discover in a library. And we're 
very fortunate that in this time when, you know, as you mentioned, so many of the physical branches are closed, we're able to help libraries stay connected with readers. And it really, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, like I said, my I'm in my mid thirties, my parents are in the early seventies. I have nieces and nephews who are 13 and younger and all of us are using the service basically every single day. Mac Voices is supported by Linode. You can build it on Linode. A robust online presence is important anytime, but even more so right now. You need your website or your hosted services to be as stable and secure as possible, but you also need to have those services as responsive as possible. And that's why you need Linode. If you already have a site, take a look at how long it takes to load. If it seems slow, you should look into Linode. Their native SSD storage, 40 gigabit network, and industry-leading processors make sure that your site will load as quickly as possible. And a fast-loading site means more business. If you're looking to build a new site or deploy new services, you should look at Linode for the same reason, but also because of their 10 worldwide data centers, so that your site can be hosted where it needs to be, not where the service provider thinks it should be. And you want to be sure that your site is easy to keep up. Linode makes deployment and maintenance easy with their tools to provision, secure, monitor, and back up your server. And that's just the beginning. So right now, go find out what Linode can do for you at linode.com slash macvoices. That's linode, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash macvoices, and take $20 off your first server package. linode.com slash macvoices to take $20 off your first server package. Get started now and have your new server up and online in no time. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. Yeah, and I think that, the, and with absolutely no no disrespect intended, I think yeah. there was a time that library science was was seen as a little bit stodgy and a little bit old, and that absolutely. has evolved so much. I mean, you know, the the the, the old uh, card catalog system uh, that you were pr- probably used to going into yeah. maybe, if well, depending on what age group you are, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and flipping through the cards and uh, that's gone. Now it's it's yeah. all digital. It, it's had to be because now there's the inf- the amount of information that's out there is so much. And library science is just now in a very exciting, very cutting edge kind of place to to work and be. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is going to our um, these conferences that we do frequently. You know, these major library conferences because it gets you get a chance to see that there really isn't a quote unquote stereotypical librarian. You know, people think of like like you said, a kind of an old stodgy person with glasses falling off their nose, and they've got <laughs> you know blue hair, and they're shushing you. But it's you know you'll see a lot of blue hair actually, but it's usually because it's dyed blue. Um, but you'll see you see people of all ages, of all backgrounds, and really what they have in common is they are champions of literature, and they want people to know that they are there for them in any facet that they might need. Uh, and it's just it's such a powerful tool to have a master of library science. And in fact, at Overdrive we have a lot of librarians that are their staff librarians and their job is to help curate content for the libraries to work with publishers to make the content available it's it's a joy i like to tell everyone i'm librarian adjacent because i've been there for almost a decade but i don't personally have a master of library science (laughs) but it's just it's such a impressive thing to see all of the different ways that librarians help out (laughs) our uh our, you know, our, our communities every single day. This is one of my two dogs who likes to join uh, conversations quite frequently. Oh, oh he's welcome. He's welcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, sometimes I think that those of us that have been around a little, for a little while don't realize how much some of these things have changed until you walk in. And it's like, wow, this is not at all the library that I remember as a kid uh, in high school or college even. Um, it's, a, it's a whole new world. Yeah, they have like what they have what they like to call maker spaces, which are just these like little hubs of creativity. And like I said, whether it's uh, a librarian who's helping someone with an after school project or it's someone who's helping, you know, a, a high level executive put together a presentation and, uh, you know, to help with a merger. Like there are countless ways that librarians are really connecting people of all ages. And, and it's not only the those types of things they provide. You know, I mentioned reading to, to children and stuff like that, but our local library here where I live in, they do a weekly farmer's market. And then later on in the week, they do a weekly concert and it's always with a local band and it turns into like a little street festival and it's always centered around the library. And it's 
always free to the community because your taxes are what's paying for it. And they're just, it's such a powerful thing. And like I said, it's something where the digital version is just a branch of it. But I mean, it's been amazing for us to see over the past couple of months since everyone's been staying at home. I mean, we're like, we're seeing like an 85% increase in the users from the digital version. And that's just, it's these people who are at home and they need something to read and they're realizing that, like you said, it can be really easy to push that, that purchase button on an ebook. And of course, if you have the means to do that and you want to support, you know, independent publishers and independent bookstores and things like that, that's an incredible tool. But if you don't have the means to do that, you can always access the library and you can always access it digitally. And, you know, what we found is a lot of people, and, and I'm one of them, is I'll read a book from the library and then I'll end up buying all of the books from those authors that I like. <laughs> so it actually ends up costing me money to, to use one book from the library. But it's just, it's a way, it's a discoverability tool that you wouldn't, you know, you'll take a chance on a book or an audio book from a, an author that maybe you've never heard of because it's free. And then you'll end up and you'll go back and read their entire collection and, and purchase that content. So it, what libraries do is just such a it's such an amazing thing that you know more and more people are taking advantage of but you know it it would be our dream to to see 100 percent of of citizens using it whenever they can for whatever thing they may need it for and the thing i like about what you've done here with sonos is that that up till this point eh, pretty much more of eh, yeah pretty much i think listening to an audiobook is a is a solo experience mm -hmm. or or maybe you know shared with a, one or two other people in a car yeah. but now you can have the audiobook playing throughout your house uh, you can be doing other things that you know productive things mm -hmm. doing the dishes cleaning out the garage you know whatever you need to be doing and still enjoying the book so it makes that those chores easier and you're still like you and your wife are doing. You know, I, I love that fact that you both can listen to the same book and then have that common experience and discuss it and share it and and get the most out of the book. Yeah, and not only that, it's it, we always talk. People always ask us why are audiobooks so popular, and it's because if you think about it, really, the first way that you learned about stories was you were read either on your parents' lap or when you're in bed. It's you heard these stories, and that's. It's it's almost like a nostalgic thing to have someone tell you a story, especially when you get like a really good narrator, like Will Wheaton or you know, Neil Gaiman or Jim Dale. You hear these voices where you're just taken back. And exactly what you said, you know, I listen to audiobooks when I'm going for a run or walking these dogs, but I have headphones in, and that's not always the most natural experience. There's something really magical about having an entire room filled up with you know that awesome sound quality that you and I both know Sonos has, which is great, but just having that all around you having it just kind of envelop the entire house it is a really it's it's a soothing it's almost like a calming experience and my wife was eating a bowl of soup today and she said soup is really calming and that's exactly what i was thinking about for these audiobooks it's like it's just this calming experience to have this story on like you said whether you're you know sitting doing the dishes or you're just sitting on your couch and enjoying it at the end of the night it's such a a fun way to rediscover books that you've loved for a long time or discover something that you you know, haven't read before yeah, I, I I think this is such a great partnership. Um, mm -hmm. it, and it in, in hindsight, it kind of seems so obvious that why didn't somebody think of doing this before? But mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, the COVID nineteen situation seems to have uh, created new opportunities and new ways of thinking. And this is one of them. And I'm I'm just delighted over it. I think it's great. Yeah, I and I the that's exactly what, like what you're talking about with, with COVID. You know, it's something where there's so many hard things that are going on about this that it's nice to be able to give something back and be a little bit positive positive. and i'm going to have some dark some barking dogs here in a moment oh i'm sure i'm sure. <laughs> um adam so what what is the website to go to where folks can learn more about this absolutely so if you go to uh, meet.libbyapp.com you'll get all the information about libby and everything that we have going on there and then we have uh, information about sonos there and then you can also go to overdrive.com and see basically everything about our company and all sorts of content and all sorts of good stuff. So yeah, meet.libbyapp.com is going to be a perfect place to go. Or you can just go to the, the app store and, and download Libby and then the Sonos app if you have it and, and we'll be right there for you. 
Perfect. Perfect. Adam, thank you for the time and for introducing to this. I, I One more time, I think it's a great partnership. Congratulations on uh, on pulling this off because I'm sure it was n- no small consideration to get all the, the back-end agreements done. So good job. Yeah. It, you know, there's, thank you so much. Our developers are really world-class people and we're excited to be able to provide this to people you know, in, in their homes and give them a, another way to experience audiobooks. Definitely. Come back anytime. We're, it's always fun to talk about this stuff. And uh, as, as things develop, we'd love to have you back. That we are, I would love to come back and chat. I'm always happy to talk about books and libraries. Terrific. Terrific. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Support your local library. And this is a great way to do it in these, uh, in these challenging times uh, because it means that you're getting more out of the library. They're getting to sh- introduce you to new things. It's a win-win all around. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.